Virginia head lacrosse coach Dom Starja has built a powerful program in Charlottesville, but the Syracuse Orange men have remained a thorn in the side of his Virginia Cavaliers. Tucker Radabaugh helped Virginia build a lead on the Orange men in last season's NCAA quarterfinals at Hofstra University. His teammate Jay Jalbert also came up with a key goal in the contest as the Cavaliers built a lead on Roy Simmons Jr.'s Orange men. But before a huge crowd of Syracuse fans at Hofstra under the summer sun, the Orange men mounted a comeback. Key players like the outstanding brother tandem of Casey and Ryan Powell help bring the Orange men back from the brink of defeat. Later, when Matt Kataya scored a decisive goal, the comeback was complete. The Orange men had themselves a 17 to 14 victory in the NCAA quarterfinals. This great college lacrosse rivalry is renewed next. Super Sports presents Syracuse University Lacrosse. Today in the Carrier Dome, the fifth ranked Virginia Cavaliers come to town to meet the fourth ranked Syracuse Orange Men. The season opener for the Cavaliers. Syracuse is 1 and 0 on the campaign after an opening night 20 to 13 win over Rutgers. Welcome to the Carrier Dome along with Dale Dreifolcher. I'm Ted DeLuca. Great to have you with us for what should be another tremendous matchup in this great rivalry, Dale. And as we take a look at today's contest between Syracuse and Virginia, you think that tempo will play a big key. Well, face-off really can establish the tempo. Last week, we had 33 face-offs. If you can control those face-offs, you get that many in a game, high-scoring game, and this could be a high-scoring game, you really get to dictate how the game goes, and, and any coach would like that. So let's watch the face-offs, Ted. Both teams do like to put a lot of points on the board, so that will certainly be a key in this matchup. The head coach for Virginia, Dom Starja, knows this is one of the all-time great rivalries in college lacrosse. It started in 94 in the playoff game, that semifinal game that we played. Uh, 17 to 16, I believe, in overtime uh, was one of the greatest lacrosse games I think I've ever been a part of. The last three years have produced some unbelievable lacrosse. You know, not so much a coach's dream all the time, but uh, a player's game that's been great for the fans and I think great for the game. I think that the Virginia Syracuse game has really turned into one of the regular season events of the college lacrosse year. Dale, the Syracuse defense will need to keep an eye on Virginia's number 10, Jay Jalbert. Well, one of the things we've been talking about in the past is not only how good they are, and you look at Jalbert, 34 goals, 14 assists, he's 6'2", 205. These guys are big, talented, and Jalbert's as good as they come, so Syracuse is going to have to match up with him defensively right away. Syracuse head coach John Desco, 1-0 and o as the head man here at Syracuse. He talks about why this rivalry is so good and why it's a red-letter day for all lacrosse fans. I think it's one of the better games, at least it has been in the past, in lacrosse. You've got, you've got two teams that like to push the ball up the field, will take a fast break if they get a fast break. Uh, I think they prefer that upper tempo, if you will, that faster tempo of a game. And in very few lacrosse games, in, in Division I lacrosse, do you see two teams that just look at each other and say, you know, I don't care how you play, I'm still going to play the way that we play. And we both play that way, and we're just going to see who comes out on top. Dale, what a great game for Matt Kataya. First contest of the season for the Orange Men. Seven goals, three assists. And if you're Dom Starge and you're the, the Virginia coaching staff, you look down and say, all right, who are they going to match up with Jalbert? Who are we going to match up with Kataya? So there's the two uh, interesting matchups right there. Kataya is very scary if you're an opposing coach. A lot of firepower on the field this evening. I wouldn't want to be in goal to try to face these two no attacks. Way. We'll come back after a timeout and show you the starting lineups and the opening faceoff. Should be a wonderful ball game. Syracuse and Virginia in the Carrier Dome. Tonight's contest is brought to you by Brian Lacrosse. Welcome back to the Carrier Dome on the campus of Syracuse University. The Orange Men getting set to take on the Virginia Cavaliers. Let's meet the starting lineups for both teams. First for visiting Virginia, the season opener for the Cavs. Radabaugh, McKnight, and Gill on the attack. The middies, Jalbert, Leahy, and Mullen, the close defenders. Curtis, Davies, and Harvey. And in goal for Virginia today, Dale. 
Derek Kenny getting the start for the Cavs. He'll be replacing O'Neal. Derek Kenny, a true freshman, and they think that uh, they play a little bit better with him than they did with O'Neal, so that's going to be the story for goal. And now for the Syracuse Orange men, the attack, Ataya, Powell, and Arcangelo. The middies for the Orange, Soliday, Kayoni, and Kaufman, and the close defenders, Rule, Ackerman, and Abrams. And between the pipes for the Orange men, Rob Mulligan. Mulligan got uh, better as the game went on last week. They were satisfied with his uh, his performance, and, and I think he played well last week, especially in the latter parts of the game. So he's going to be a key early. This is a great rivalry. The Orange men and Virginia Cavaliers shaking hands at the center of the field. We certainly expect a high-octane matchup in the Dome. Dom Starja, head coach of the Cavaliers, his seventh campaign, 66 and 24, down in Charlottesville. And the head coach of the Orange men, his first season as the head man, John Desco, 1-0. The Orange won their season opener over Rutgers in the Dome, 20-13. Getting set for the faceoff. Look at Hard, uh, who is a local kid playing for Virginia. Usually does the faceoffs. The 11th meeting in this series, which is tied at five wins apiece. The Orange winning in 97 by a goal, 22 21, and in 98, 18 to 17. These two teams also met in the NCAA playoffs. Last season, the Orange men pulling out a hard-fought win at Hofstra, 17 to 14. Flag Just down. underway, yes, we have a flag down on the field. Offside. That's going to uh, Walt Munsey, Bill Ellis, Bruce Teague, and Paul Stockwell doing the flag throwing, and there was one early as Bill Ellis detected an offside. So there will be a 30-second penalty, and the ball given over to Syracuse. I don't know where the ball is right now. Neither do the officials. They're going to take it. They're going to bring the ball back. OK, Josh Rule has it. Syracuse will work the clear. And the bouncing ball is taken over the midfield stripe by Syracuse's Matt Coyone. Here come the orange man. Coyone quickly on the board. Syracuse has the lead at 1-0, 35 seconds into the game. Well, they got a benefit of, a, uh, of an offside, so it was a, a man-up goal right out of the, right out of the uh, beginning of the game. Syracuse lost the faceoff, but they were offside. The Virginia was, and they gave the ball back, and Coyone takes a right-hand shot, just a streak, well-placed as he beats the freshman Kenny with just 35 seconds gone in the game. So one nothing in the season is two goals and one assist, but one one nothing just that fast for Syracuse. Matt Coyone, the junior from Yorktown, Virginia controlled the opening faceoff, so Syracuse will scramble for the second one, and a good job by the Orange men and Jason Denico to track it down on the far side. Boy, Hard stayed right after him, the faceoff man. Let's see the ball eventually goes. Virginia way. He lost the initial draw, but hard out of CNS stayed right with it and played that very, very tough. And Deneker eventually lost the ball out of bounds. It'll be Virginia ball. Triggering on the far side for the Cavaliers. Jay Jalbert, good size, 6'2", 205 pounds. The junior from Huntington, New York. And the Cavaliers have the ball in the offensive end. Syracuse's defense will be put to the test today. The Cavaliers very powerful on the offensive end of the field. Jalbert trying to shake free. Shoots high over the goal. Cavaliers back it up. Virginia will keep the ball on the offensive end. thing about Jalbert is he can play midfield or attack, and uh, most guys can, but some feel more comfortable. He's just an interchangeable part and a, a very, very good player, a guy to watch. Trying to shake free from behind the goal for Virginia. Tucker Radabaugh, he's pushed outside by Josh Rule. Good job for Rule to get him away from the goal. Michael Leahy has it on the far side. Met by Jeff Lowe, the orange man. Streaking to the goal for a shot and a score. Jamison Mullen, the Cavaliers have tied it up 1-1. Jamison Mullen gets a little bit of a look, and you're going to see what he saw. Watch him with a left-hand shot right there. Perfect pass from number 14, uh, Connor Gill. And number four, Jamison Mullen, ties it up on a, just a perfect pass from behind the cage. First goal of the season for the Cavaliers. This is their season opener. 
third faceoff of the game. Mullen, as a freshman last season, with four goals and two assists for Dom Starja. This faceoff taken by the Cavaliers. Jenkins gets it away, and now the Cavs set up in the offensive end. Drew McKnight controls on the near side. Met by Marshall Abrams, who played a strong game against Rutgers in the season opener for, for the Orange Men. Off the ground ball. The Cavaliers score. Syracuse's defense unsettled. David Baruch with the goal. It's 2-1 to one Virginia. Well, you know, it's like soccer or any sport. Unless you know where the ball is going to go, you can't just knock it like that because you're not sure where it's going to go. Watch what happens. He just hits it back in. Ackerman, 26. Unfortunately, it goes right to a Virginia player. And, of course, number 24, David Baruch, just puts it in. Didn't know who was going to get it. Just tried to save it in. It's, it's a nice effort, but you really have to watch that because what can happen is what did happen. 2-1 with uh, less than two minutes left gone, I should say, in this first quarter. Certainly a tough chance for Robbie Mulligan on that play. Didn't have much space between him and the attacker, and he was beaten over his right shoulder. Syracuse in the offensive end. Kataya controls behind the goal, chased by a long stick for Virginia, Doug Davies. Doug Davies, one of the defensemen, he's drawn the assignment of uh, taking the guy who had 10 points last week, and he takes the ball and puts it on the carpet. Good job. Virginia scoops up the ground ball. Cavaliers work quickly up the field. What a great debut for Kataya in the season opener. Seven goals and three assists in that 20-13 win over Rutgers. In a team that you and I thought was pretty good, Ted. I didn't think Rutgers was bad at all. Syracuse with 20 goals against the Scarlet Knights and in previous meetings, Dale, especially down at Piscataway, New Jersey, the Orangemen had their hands full with Rutgers defense. So a great opening night performance by the Orange. And uh, Virginia looks, however, very sharp for a team that hasn't played a game yet. Syracuse has that little bit of an advantage. I think that's a great point. Tremendous passing in the slot, and it pays off with another goal for Virginia and David Baruch, his second here in the first quarter. The Cavs take a 3-1 lead. Now, you would think that Syracuse would have the edge, Dale, since they've already played a game this season, but you turn it around the other side of the coin. The Cavaliers have had the entire preseason to get ready for the Orange Man. You're absolutely right. That's a good point. They feed the slot right there. Left open, Baruch left open. There's a slide, but they can't get stick on stick. And, you know, if, if they let him shoot like that, Mulligan's going to have a long night. 3-1 Virginia at this point. Great start to the ball game for Baruch, the senior midi from Haverford, Pennsylvania. Whistle after the draw, and Syracuse will take the ball. They're alternating face-off, man. They've had uh, uh, Jenkins was out there for Virginia. Hard has done it a couple of times. So they're, they're doing some different things on the face-off, but Syracuse gets that one via the penalty route. The Orange men will have to shift into comeback mode. The Cavaliers have a 3-1 lead. Less than four minutes gone by in the first quarter here in the Carrier Dome. And we do expect a lot of offense today. Syracuse works the ball around the cage. Ryan Powell had it knocked away from his cross. He scoops up the ground ball, looking for a cutter toward the goal. Here it is, shot and a score! Three to two, Virginia, Chris Cordisco with the tally. Just a nice left-handed shot by number 23, Chris Cordisco. 5'11", 190, but watch what they do over on Powell. Watch, look at the traffic's gonna go over there. And then they kind of overload it, and he passes over, and everyone was looking for Powell, maybe sagging back towards Powell, and what happens is, ball's on the carpet, Powell says, everybody's over here, I'll pass it over there, and Cordisco just takes that little shuffle step, and he beats Kenny for goal number two for Syracuse. Cordisco with his second goal of the year, and what a beautiful feed from Ryan Powell. Loose ball at midfield, Syracuse trying to keep it. And now a battle for possession. Dan Stesson scoops it up for the Orange men. Syracuse resets in the offensive end. Pattaya will bring it behind the goal. The Orange men get the midfielders onto the field. Pattaya shadowed by Virginia's Doug Davies. Dale, as you pointed out, that'll be a tough assignment for him today. Pattaya with a good look. And the deflection comes back to Matt, and he'll reset. Work of the ball on the outside. Interesting to see the matchups, the individual matchups. Little pick and roll. Cordisco hits the outside. Kutaya there for the backup. 
Syracuse keeps him in the offensive end. Chris Cordisco, senior midfielder, one of the Orange captains, along with his brother Jeff, here in 1999. And we have a whistle stopping play of the awarding off call against Syracuse, and Virginia will take over. Let's see what kind of a ride. Syracuse did some aggressive riding against Rutgers. They're going to do it against right now. They're doing it against Virginia. Cavaliers get it over midfield. Jason Hard wins it ahead. Hard, the local product, had an outstanding scholastic career in Section 3. That's going to be off Virginia. That's going to be Syracuse ball. Hard used not only as face-offs. You get a look at him right there. He is staying in for a turn at the midfield. But the orange man on the clear now. Just going to say that errant pass gives Syracuse a little chance. Now here's some problems Syracuse. Now they're going to zone Syracuse here on this clear. And Syracuse had a couple of problems clearing the ball last week against a tough Rutgers team. But they did there. Just took them a little time. They didn't panic. That's the important thing. And didn't have the real long pass forced on them. And that's where you get into trouble. That's a good point. Rule waiting for the opening. Was able to get it over midfield to Tim Burns. Syracuse setting up in the offensive end. The freshman Josh Kaufman holds on the near side, tries to shake loose from his man. Good, aggressive man-to-man -man defense employed by Virginia once the Orange men break toward the net. Kaufman spins. Beautiful pass in front, feeding Kataya. A flag is down on the play. We'll wait for the call. They're going to get a penalty, too. That was a slash. Those aren't wiped out. So that ties it up, 3-3. Take a look at this. They kind of overloaded, they just kind of isolated one-on-one. -on -one. They made the slide and left Kataya open, and he puts it in, and there was a slash. In the box for Virginia, Brendan Moeller. So Moeller draws the penalty. Kataya with his eighth goal of the season. That ties it up 3-3. Syracuse had been behind. 3-1. to one. It's a golden opportunity now if you can get the face off. The key is can you get it? Syracuse loses it momentarily as Coots, excuse me, Jenkins gets it for Virginia. Jenkins a good player. Burst of speed. Misfires as he came all the way in on Robbie Mulligan. Big play by Jenkins because had he been able to get a, a man down goal when, when his team was man down, that would have been significant. As it was, they got the back up. The Syracuse should double team the guy coming in because they are still a man up for 46 seconds. Virginia will trigger. Syracuse one for one in the man-up situations today. Drew McKnight sends to the near side as the Cavaliers work the ball around. The Orange men very aggressive trying to get the ball back with the man-up situation in play. Josh Rule scoops up the ground ball. Now the Orange must clear. Mulligan tosses it ahead on the near side. It's Ackerman. taken by Ackerman. And they sent him over because they said we got somebody back. So Ackerman is going to give it up. And Syracuse is going to call a timeout there. I, they didn't like that setup, and they got a lot of time left. 14 seconds on the man up, Ted. So after Ackerman got rid of the ball, they said, let's resettle here, and uh, let's get a group in that we know can, uh, can do what we want. After a strong debut against Rutgers, John Desco feels that goaltender Robbie Mulligan is more than ready to take on the Virginia Cavaliers tonight. Well, we feel he is. Uh, Rob's playing with a lot of confidence. I think there were some nerves in the, in the opener uh, against Rutgers, the first uh, home game of the year. And I think we saw as the game went on, Rob stepped it up, became more relaxed, more confident in the goal. And 11 of those 13 saves were in the second half. So it was encouraging to see that. Dale, Robbie Mulligan tested just a moment ago. Yeah, and, and you know, Coach Desco, of course, is right. Uh, he saw the ball well, got down on it, bounced out away from him. But in that first half, he was not following the ball well against Rutgers, but he got stronger. And as he mentioned, 11 of his 13 saves came in the second half. He really shut Rutgers down. And to be honest, a couple of them were almost open cage goals where the defense gave the ball. Happened again today when they just knocked the ball out. Ackerman knocked it out, and uh, they got a, a, an easy goal there. So I thought he played well. Still a long way to go in this matchup, all even 3-3. Syracuse works it around, a set play after the timeout. The Orangemen unable to capitalize on the man-up situation. Yeah, there was a push, no possession push, so Syracuse will get the ball back. The penalty has elapsed, they should be even. I don't know whether he made it in out of the box yet. 
Yes, he did. So they're all even up. So Syracuse has it, setting up in the offensive end. First man up opportunity, no go for Syracuse. Brian Soliday had a strong debut against Rutgers in the season opener. His pass is deflected, but it's scooped right up by Coyone. Kaufman sends to the far side as the Orange continue to work it around. Virginia's defense, Dale, doesn't give you many openings in terms of clear passing lanes in front of the goal. No, they don't, and uh, they're just going to make an adjustment here on the cage. I think it was kind of I'm not sure it was set correctly, but yes, indeed, that's exactly right. They do not give you a lot of shooting lanes, and they make you work hard for every shot you get off, so you really have to make them count. Now, that's a pass. That's going to go out of bounds. Virginia ball. As John Desco watches from the Syracuse sideline, his orange and his dogfight, 3-3. Three, three. Syracuse and Virginia, the turnovers even as well, 3-3. Three, three. And that mistake by the orange men, Dale, was a direct result of that defense that the orange men will end up facing all day. Yep. Here comes Virginia to the offensive end, controlling on the near side. And now it goes behind the goal to Connor Gill. They are very high in what he brings to the table. Freshman attack man, 6'2", 200 pounds from Timonium, Maryland. They keep getting bigger, don't they, Teddy? We they talked do. about that in the Rutgers game. It uh, used to be a game for guys of 5'6", and 5'7". seven. still can play, but everybody else seems to be getting a lot bigger. Gill has it behind the cage now to McKnight on the near side. Syracuse doing a good job defensively on this trip up the field by Virginia. Bouncing shot, knocked away in front of the goal. Yeah. Ground ball taken by Virginia. McKnight even with the cage. Abrams all over him. McKnight trying to spin. Shoots high and scores. Pretty play by Drew McKnight. That makes it 4-3 to three, Virginia. Marshall Abrams was on him, but not on him enough. He just had enough of a shot to get it up over the shoulder of Abrams and Mulligan. Watch this go right here. There's Abrams. And then you're getting a good look at uh, McKnight. Now he goes right, keeps going right, stops, comes back. See the distance he got? Just enough different distance, and he went high over the head of Mulligan. So he took him right and then just made that little cut. And when you get that six-inch separation, if you're good like McKnight, you put it in the hole. Beautiful play. McKnight, the junior from Virginia Beach, Virginia, 19 goals, 24 assists last season. Syracuse with possession. The Orange men need to get it out of their own end. Long pass up the near sideline. Ball pops free after the Syracuse player came down. That was Tim Burns who tried to control the pass. Whistle stops play on the near side, and Virginia will take the ball. Virginia ball right there. They're still in their own end, just behind the midfield line. Now they get it over. Henry Oki brings it ahead for the Cavs. Now to McKnight. Spreading things out a little bit now. Trying to create some spacing in front. Mulligan knocks the shot down. Ahead for Abrams over the midfield strike. Good passing by the Orange in the offensive oh. end until then. Thrown high and away by Matt Soffarelli. He would love to have that one back. Well, you can tell that they worked that play, that fast break play. He was looking for D'Arcangelo. He put it a foot over his head, and it didn't go the other way. But that was really a pretty play up to that point. Virginia now works the ball away from its own end. A slim one-goal lead for the Cavaliers. 5-18 left to play first quarter here in the Carrier Dome. This has all the makings of... Another great meeting between Syracuse and Virginia. Two of the top programs in all of college lacrosse. Two top five Whoa. teams going head to head. And physical play. Ball pops free and Syracuse will take it. Super check on 40 Koontz. Watch the handle. Watch his handle. It's like a catapult. He sent that about 30 yards. It's like one of those things you used to have when they put a siege on, you know, and they, they'd show the, <laughs> show the dead cow over the... Uh, Castle wall, that's exactly what happened, and that went about 40 yards. The preseason poll 
for Division I College Lacrosse. According to Faceoff Magazine, has Princeton at number one, Johns Hopkins, Loyola of Maryland, then Syracuse and Virginia at number four and number five. So two top five teams going head-to-head -head in the Dome today. Duke, Maryland, Georgetown, the North Carolina Tar Heels, and Hofstra round out the top ten. Dom Starja has done a terrific job at Virginia, but as we talked about earlier, Dale, he's had a tough time beating the Syracuse Orange men in their most recent matchups. That's right. He's, uh, he has had some, some, uh, some great games, but uh, he has come out short on them. That, by, the wall, uh, the, by the way, that ball did go to Virginia, so Syracuse player must have touched it after he catapulted it out of bounds. So Virginia keeps it after that vicious hit by the Orange men. Worked the ball on the outside again, spreading it out. Cavaliers trying to create some spacing in front of the goal. Good defense applied by the Orange men. Syracuse fans wanted a warding off call, and none was forthcoming. Harley Holcomb gets it away to the far side as the Cavaliers spread it out. Near side, McKnight, even with the cage, he sends back out high. Holcomb trying to beat his man. Shoved away. Good job by Matt Alexander. Centering pass. Good save by Mulligan. Virginia will keep it and not I think we'll get a crease call. Yeah, I'm just going to say number 18, Henry Oki took a little trip through the crease. Uh, they were trying to take advantage of a quick shot on Mulligan and uh, watch where it goes. They get it in. There's the stick. And Mulligan saved it, hit it, knocked it up with a stick. Ackerman there helped him out, but you see Oki in the crease. Syracuse ball. Kutai takes it behind. Shots all even. Seven apiece. Syracuse down on the scoreboard, 4-3. to three. The Orange men have it in the offensive end. 3.50 left to play, first quarter. Tyone trying to shake free. Double team, gets it away to the open man. Shot and a score! The Cuse tied up at four. Brian Soliday with the laser. Yeah, he's... He's got a patent on that shot. He scored uh, a couple of man-up goals last week or last game against Rutgers. But he's got a great left-handed shot. And Coyone drew a lot of people. And look at the separation he's got. There's nobody there. They make a, a last-minute effort to get to him. But this guy's got a left-handed shot that he just takes two steps and really cranks. And he gets Kenny down on his knees. And that ball goes in for goal number four for Syracuse and goal number four on the season for Saladay. Yeah, we've been doing these games for a while. Remember Paul Carcaterra had a similar shot. Just yes. a laser. And Saladay looks to have the exact same thing going for him. And he seems to get open. He's got that pure left hand. And he just really is able to uh, shake himself open. The Orange men have it in the offensive end after the draw. Cordisco. Hops onto the turf, and he will take it on the near side. Jeff Cordisco, along with his brother Chris, two of the four Syracuse captains of this season. Jeff's got a pretty intense knee brace on. That's, uh, he's had some problems there. Virginia coming out to play the Orange men as they spread the defense a bit. In front of their keeper, freshman Derek Kenny. His first college start against the Syracuse Orange men in the Carrier Dome. Near side Burns. Ryan Powell circling behind the net. Gets a screen <laughs> from Kataya. It's a screen and a half. Looking for a give and go, and Kataya having a hard time scooping it up. And finally he will. Oh, nice check. Ryan Curtis. We talked Curtis. about him before the game. That Tough wasn't defender. Fandy. Yeah, absolutely. I think Utah was trying to drag him out there and see if he could beat him out 30 yards from the goal, but uh, he got fooled as Curtis knocked the ball out, turns it over for Virginia. Curtis, a junior defender from Potomac, Maryland, made a very nice play. Here come the Cavaliers. Loose ball. Virginia trying to scoop it up. David Jenkins couldn't find it. Syracuse will take it. Devin Ackerman with the scoop, and we have a whistle stopping play. Out and back, so that's going to give the ball back. Once you leave that little box, you can't go back. Uh, and uh, that's exactly what happened. Watch. They turn Ackerman back. And uh, when he puts his foot right, Var, that did it. Virginia two for four on clears. Syracuse a perfect four for four. Cavaliers have it in the offensive end. Good aggressive defense played by Josh Rule as he tries to force the ball carrier. Outside, Tucker Radabaugh 
Good look at the goal. Mulligan makes a beautiful save. Stoning Jamison Mullen. Virginia keeps it. Aaron pass. Cavs keep it. Bouncing shot. Mulligan comes up with the save. Stoning J.J. Bear. Syracuse will try to clear. The Orange four for four on clears. Syracuse a chance to get it away. Two great stops by Mulligan. The Orange men in transition. Seglia sends it ahead near side. Kataya. What a great sequence for Syracuse. The Orange, patient in the offensive end. They're just sending cutters. They got two guys in the goal. They got the goalie and uh, Curtis, one of the, de the defensemen there. Ryan Powell harassed behind the cage. Flag comes down. We'll get a penalty against Virginia. Cordisco on the weak side. And you want out high. You want to make sure you get a shot off now. You don't want if the ball drops, it's all over. You get a free shot, and Paul that's why they're held. Oh, there's one. Now that's going to be two men down. Oh, that'll Disco stop it. Could not control the pass, and play stops says Ryan Powell absorbed a couple of hard hits. Absolutely, and, and the thing is, I think it was two different people. That would be two men down. So you got a hold and a slash. So we'll see the hold. Right there's the hold. And then the, the, the attempt there, but watch the slash was up after that. We don't see it right now on this one. We'll pick the sequence up later, but suffice it to say. A slash and a hold on number 10 blue. Okay, it is the same man. So they are one man down. Jay Jalbert. Virginia's number 10. Let's watch it. Yeah. <laughs> well, you could have taken any any one of those if you wished. So he's out for up to a minute and a half. Syracuse on the man up. A 4-4 tie. Less than a minute to go in the first quarter of action. Syracuse works it around. Now sends it back for Kataya. Good save by Kenny. Syracuse will keep it, heading down toward 30 seconds to go in the quarter. They have a lot of time now in this man up. They can be patient, and they can even hold on to the ball and get the uh, second quarter faceoff. Kataya holding, now sends it out high for Soliday. Syracuse works it around. That was a shot. Pass sent across the crease. It was a shot. Yep. You're right, Dale. So Syracuse will keep it. Yep. Ten seconds to go in the quarter. Tyone sends it to the far side. Down to five seconds to play. Soliday out high. Yeah, here they're looking for him. That's the end of the quarter. So Syracuse did take a shot that went across the crease. And the Orange men. One of the things that should happen is Syracuse will get the ball because in an extra man situation, unless they released him and they didn't have it up on the uh, on the scoreboard on the clock, uh, Syracuse should get the face off, get the ball, I say, without a face off, but we'll see. In order to have a great college lacrosse rivalry, you have to have many tight games over the years. Virginia head coach Dom Starja knows that Syracuse and Virginia is always a great battle. 60 is, is going to be important. This game is not going to be over until the final whistle sounds. Uh, you know, some of the things that have happened at the end of these games in the last couple of years, like, again, going back to 94, where we're down five in the fourth quarter, we're down two men, and we come back to tie the game and send it into overtime. Dom Starja in the center of his huddle. A 4-4 tie as we head to the second quarter of action, and so far, in this ball game, Dale, it's been everything we anticipated. A great contest, very, very tight, and uh, some aggressive play on both ends. Just a wonderful rivalry when Syracuse and Virginia battle. And one of the things we had talked about, faceoffs, I don't want to say they haven't been important, but they haven't been crucial. Syracuse has been getting their share, and uh, that's important. The tempo has been pretty much up tempo for both teams. First quarter numbers after the first 15 minutes of play. 99 in the shot department, uh, Syracuse up in the save department by two. Man up goal, Syracuse one out of two. If you want to look down and, and check the turnovers, six and five, pretty even. Look at the penalty minutes. Cavaliers, four penalties, two and a half minutes. And the last one, when we come back, you're gonna see that Syracuse is going to get the ball for free. Look at these Mulligan saves here. Mulligan's Mulligan's as he uh, really has stepped up. You want to be critical? Say, you got to hold on to those. Don't lose the rebound. But he has been tracking the ball very well. 
and uh, just doing a super job. And his defense giving him some help stopping the rebound. So Syracuse still man up, no face off. I don't know how much time is left in the penalty. 26 seconds left in the penalty. Syracuse still on the man up as we begin the second quarter of play. The Orange men would love to capitalize on this long man up situation. They did not put a goal on the board at the end of the first quarter. Syracuse one of two man up so far today. Good save by Kenny. Syracuse controls. Kenny made the save on Kataya. Tyone will have it and he'll reset. Time up. It's even. Here they come. Soliday to the far side. Kataya even with the cage. Powell has it. Now back out high. Tyone with the long flowing hair. One of those Yorktown kids that loves to come to Syracuse. Oh. It was a nice idea, but yeah. Virginia made a stellar defensive play. Darkangelo was open, couldn't get it, goes the other way. Oh, ball up in the air, down on the carpet. Cavs have it. Shot and a goal. Virginia in transition. Connor Gill with the tally. Five to four. Cavaliers, we said earlier, they love what the freshman Connor Gill brings to this Virginia team. That's his first collegiate goal. When you look at the replay, you're going to see the ball is down. They get a stick on him. He manages to get rid of the ball. But he's going to get it back again. And here he goes right. They let him get too much, too soon, too far. And he comes up with his first goal. He's got an assist. Face off goes Syracuse way. Good job by the Orange men to control the draw. Jason Deniker handling the face off duties that trip. Here come the Orange men. Good passing by Syracuse. SU with a chance. Shot in the goal for the Orange men. We are tied at five. Chris Cordisco. You got a freshman in the goal, and he's a little upset at himself. And if you're Syracuse, you love it. Watch Cordisco takes a little short hopper right at the feet. And you can see, watch what the goalie does after this. Damn, where was that ball? <laughs> and you're going to get another look. We got him. You want replays? We got him. Right-handed goalie watching Cordisco come, puts it down between the legs, upset with himself. And if you're Dom Starger, you want to say, calm down. We got a lot of game left. Don't get upset. You don't want your goalie miffed. Another faceoff controlled by the Orange men. And one of the keys to that goal, Dale, Syracuse controlled the faceoff and scored very quickly after the draw. That's correct. Check at midfield, Burns takes it. He gets hit a second time, manages to hold on to the ball. Near side for a disco again. Powell has it behind the net. A 5-5 tie, 13 minutes to play in the first half. Syracuse patient in the offensive end against a very good Virginia defense. Jeff Cordisco with the heavy brace on his left knee onto the field. Burns has it well away from the cage. David Jenkins matching up with him. Burns trying to break free. Aaron pass in front, and it will be Virginia ball. One of the things Tom Sarger was saying in those little sound bite we had, Every shot, every pass up and down the field is going to be important in this game. And he's absolutely right. That's the kind of thing where you don't want to throw the ball away too often because that's going to come back to haunt you. Nice check. What a dandy check. Chance for the Orange. Powell. 6-5 Syracuse. Defense sparking the offense. Well, Tim Burns should get the assist on this, and he will. What a great job of a check that he did. And he gets the ball afterwards. Watch this check, rap check, ball up in the air, gets it, turns around. Now instead of running, he looks, sees who's open. My man's open, Ryan Powell. I'm going to get an assist. And you get Powell that close. Kenny's in trouble. Tries to go down low, but he gets beat. And that makes it 6-5 Syracuse. So Powell on the season, 5-7. and seven, But he got a great assist out of that by number 21, Tim Burns. Sensational play. Not only did the Virginia player lose the ball, he lost the stick. Yeah. Syracuse, 8 of 11 on faceoffs. 
Make it 9 of 12. The Orange men have controlled that department. Dale, you talked before the ball game about how important that would be, and Syracuse has done a tremendous job. And I didn't think, to be honest, that they would probably have that control this early, but they have been. Right now, however, oh, an errant pass there. One of those things we talked about, Dom Starge says, Boy, if you make many of those mistakes, it's going to kill you. But the, the, the uh, face-offs have gone Syracuse way, and that's that's been important. Starja stalking the sidelines. Virginia's season opener. Turnovers even at seven aside. The orange on the clear. Syracuse working the ball away from its own net. A slim 6-5 orange lead. A lot of lacrosse left to be played under the Teflon roof today. More than 11 minutes of time remaining in the second quarter. Uh, somebody was, we got a flag and an offside. I counted four people, but I, I could be wrong. The this officials is, will discuss. Yeah. Syracuse wants the ball. Let's see what the call is. Walt Munsey. It's a, a double offside, an offsetting penalty. So Syracuse had the ball. Syracuse gets the ball right where they were. Both teams were offside. So we'll pretend it never happened. <laughs> That's Syracuse right. Syracuse will continue to try to get the ball out of its own end. Looks like a replay. Robbie Mulligan gets it to Jeff Lowe at the near sideline. Jeff Lowe substituted, came in, just stood right on the on the uh, sideline, got the ball, cleared it, and it comes out. Brian Soliday controlling for the Orange men. Syracuse so setting up in the offensive end. Powell whacked, flag down. Penalty coming up against Virginia, and that will go against Ryan Curtis. That's an audio. That's an audio foul. <laughs> Listen, well, you can even see him flinch there, but you can hear it all the way up here. We don't hear the sound on the replay, but believe me, I heard that smack of aluminum all the way up here. So, Mr. Curtis will sit for one on a slash, and they begin to pile up some penalties. Syracuse a man up again, a minute slashing call against Curtis. Very talented defender for the Cavaliers, but he's put his teammates on that close defense, and a bit of a hole here. The Orange, one of three, man up today. Watch Soliday. Open man. That ricocheted off the crossbar and into the seat, so Syracuse will keep it. They are saying, watch number nine. If they saw the tape, uh, and Coach Simmons used to say, you know, every time you guys broadcast one of our games, it, they're, they're, you know, VCRs are humming all over the south. And what happened is he hit the, he hit the pipe there, but they, are, they know that Soliday is the guy they would like on that extra man up in that part of the, of the uh, field. Syracuse again setting up. Man up. Soliday shoots wide. Syracuse will keep it. He's 0 for 2 on this run. He does have that powerful shot. And the Orange men want to take advantage of that. Once again, Soliday will try to break free. The Orange working around. 20 seconds left on the man up. A lot of time. Coyone. Now a centering pass. Good double team by Virginia. Soliday lost it, got it back. Tried to feed a man on the doorstep. The pass intercepted by Kenny, and he is knocked to the turf. Flag down. Whistle stops play. <laughs> Unnecessary. I think is what Bill Ellis is going to say. Penalty will go against Syracuse as Kenny was flattened as he intercepted that pass. <laughs> He came out of the cage, did a nice job. The freshman did a nice job. But when you do that, you know, that's like painting a bullseye on yourself. <laughs> and if you want to know what I mean, take a look at this. Guts, right there. Gutsy play on yeah, his part, though. Absolutely. Obviously, what they said was it was a nice hit, but it was unnecessary. So Dark Angelo will sit. You might be wondering why he's having his head wrapped in a wet towel. Need to send some up here. We are uh, <laughs> in the midst of a heavy snowstorm here in Syracuse, and they have turned up the heat here in the dome, literally to about uh, 80 degrees, I'm guessing, so they can melt the snow off the Teflon roof. They told me it was 85 when I checked in, and uh, you know, if you're like you're in Miami Beach. The penalty situation, five on the Cavs for three and a half minutes. Syracuse one for one minute. The call against Archangelo, the first penalty of the game on the Orange Man. And that's that's good news. They had 
some penalties last week that uh, that cost them. Obviously, they, they don't always, but oftentimes they do. So the Orange men have showed improvement in that area from the Rutgers game. That will help Syracuse today. Mulligan once again with a brilliant save. Virginia's Tucker Radabaugh has done little so far in this game. Here come the Orange men. Terrific clear by the Cuse. Unsettled situation oh, favoring oh. the Orange, and maybe a little over penetration on the part of Kataya. Well, I thought, I think the fans thought he might take it behind the back shot, but uh, he didn't. Smart play by the Orange to slow it down and get the offense set up in front of the Virginia Cage. Six to five, Syracuse lead. We stood tied 4 4 at the end of one. Powell getting whacked by Curtis again. Ball pops loose. No call. Syracuse scoops up the ground ball behind the back pass. Nifty from Syracuse's Devin Darkangelo. The tie absorbs a hit. Reverses his field. The tie trying to shake loose. Sends it back out high for Tim Burns. Good defense by Davies, 17 for the Cavaliers on Kataya. Virginia's close defenders, very impressive. Kataya trying to break loose in front. Met once again by the long stick of Doug Davies. Bad pass, and Syracuse coughs it up. Absolutely not a good play. Ryan Powell not able to handle that. Not the best pass, but a bit of a communication problem here. Let's see what Syracuse does for the ride. They've been putting an aggressive ride on. This one's going to be pretty easily solved by the Cavaliers. Virginia now six of nine on clears. The Orange men nine for ten today. Virginia quickly into the offensive end. Syracuse setting up the defense. Good hit from Billy St. George. Played very well against Rutgers the other night. Cavs working around, trailing by goal. Syracuse has a 6-5 lead. Shot high over the cage. Virginia backs it up. Virginia trying to get a mismatch coming out of the substitution area. They sent number 24, Baruch, in. And then what happened was uh, he was in front of the Syracuse guy who was covering him, but it didn't work. Syracuse has the ball. Mulligan. Mulligan lost it, trying to get it back. Syracuse in trouble. Virginia tried to scoop it up. The Cavaliers threw it away. Failure to advance though, Syracuse. They didn't get it out of there in 10 seconds. Doesn't make any difference if you, the ball's bouncing around and still only have 10 seconds to get that ball out of that defensive area. So um, Syracuse will lose it. One of the things I talked to, to uh, Roy Simmons the third about was Mulligan coming out and he says, we prefer him to stay a little bit more between the pipes. But uh, <laughs> you know, that's what happens sometimes. And sometimes you have to come out. The Orange men have had a long tradition of goalies that weren't afraid to come away from the crease. Oh, good save. Especially Matt Palin. Remember oh, yeah. the way Matt used to come all the way up the field. Rolling ball oh. taken by the Orange men. Coach check. Ball pops free. Going Virginia way. Yes, Virginia will take it. Yep. John Desco wants his defense back. The Cavaliers have the ball in their end. Triggering on the near side for the Cavs. Aaron Vercalone. Here he comes. Less than seven minutes to go. First half, a 6-5 orange lead. Billy St. George applying the defense. Well, he's a tough kick. Well, he is. Knocks the ball away. And he scoops it up. Good pass. Virginia knocks it free now. And the Cavaliers will try to reset. Freshman defender Billy St. George, number seven. Keep your eye on him. Uh, Baldwin, Baldwin New, New York. York. Yep. A lot of guys from Baldwin, New York. Yeah. Cavs have it on the near side. Murphy with a right hand cradle. He sends away. The pace of the scoring has really slowed down here in the second quarter. It was 4 4 at the end of one. Now it's 6 5 Orange Men. Midway through the second quarter of play. Ackerman out now being replaced by number seven. Oh, nice track. Terrific play by Mulligan. Jalbert with a bullet. Flag down. Oh, Syracuse clearing. Call oh, will go uh, against Virginia. Let's see what the call is. 
Mulligan coming up with a huge save here. Watch this. The vision you have to have, you know, we slow that down, and it, and it looks like a, a Bayer Aspirin coming by there, and he just was able to, in fast motion, stop that thing. So give credit to number 13. He's having a good game. Rob Mulligan, the sophomore out of Farmingdale, and Brooke is going to sit for a slash, and that's going to be another man-up opportunity for Syracuse. Now, the last time, they didn't cash in on it. You do not want to... If you can get a third of your man-ups, you really are doing are doing well, but you've got to get those. If you can hit up to 40%, that would be great. You'd think you'd get a lot more of them, but it uh, doesn't always work that way. Syracuse at 25% so far today. One for four. And the orange, man up for a minute. Time ticking down on the power play. Syracuse works it around. Oh, bad pass. Bouncing toward midfield. Virginia trying to gain possession. Rule taps it ahead. Cavalier long stick scoops it up. Peter Ragosa, and he brings it in by his lonesome. Shoots wild over the net. A flag is down as he was tackled from behind. Cajoni. Starja has to like this aggressive play from Peter Ragosa. Well, I will say one thing. They got a nice stick up on him just as he unloaded the shot. I think it caused it to go a little bit high. So it's going to be a technical. So they're actually going to be almost, they're both going to be a man down for about 30 seconds. And actually 29 left on the penalty to Virginia. So they would be man up for a second. But uh, so they, they're, they're both down a man, but they're even, if you know what I mean. I get it. Okay. 30 second call on Syracuse's Matt Coyone. A push. The flowing locks of Matt Coyone from beneath his helmet. Timeout. Cavaliers. Don Starja wants to talk with his troops. Great game here in the Carrier Dome. A 6-5 Syracuse lead with 5-17 remaining in the first half. Starja's timeout stops play. Starja speaking with his team. One of the key aspects of this ball game, the Virginia defense matching up with the Orange's very potent attack. The matchups of, of Davies and Kutair and Curtis and Powell may define this game as much as any single thing. Uh, where I think you know Syracuse has got some good people at the defensive end, and, and we move people around offensively. I think if you were trying to focus on a couple little battles, you'd look at those two, I think, in particular. Seems like a while ago, Dale, the Orange's last goal in this ball game coming off an unsettled situation. Yeah, Burns uh, knocked the ball away, got it to Powell, and that was the goal that put Syracuse up at six. Right now it's 6-5. Both teams down one man. 30 seconds for Syracuse, 29 for Virginia, and we'll take a look at this upcoming schedule. Yale at Hopkins, at Towson, Brown home, and at Loyola. Pretty good stretch there of good teams. So Syracuse, uh, as usual, pressing themselves schedule-wise, as does Rutgers and just about most of the other teams in Division I. Three tough road games ahead for the Orange men on consecutive weekends. 5-17 left to go in the first half. Syracuse a one-goal lead at 6-5. to five. You know, one thing having both guys out, uh, ground balls obviously Syracuse away, but it does open the field up. Uh, you know, Teddy, you've got fewer guys out there, so there's two fewer people. The, the lanes are open a little bit more. So um, a lot of people like to see if uh, maybe you get a shot off here, even if you're even. It's just like kind of being a man up because the lanes are open. That should boost the scoring. As a matter of fact, the American Hockey League has tried something out. When they go to overtime, they play four on four because they want more scoring. So we have a similar situation here. Virginia penalty released, Syracuse penalty released. Bouncing shot wide. Jalbert misfired. And actually, the Syracuse player, Lowe, wasn't in a defensive position, so in effect, this was a man up for Virginia right here. Absolutely, you wouldn't, if he scored, it wouldn't have been that way, but you're right, because it always takes a while to run in, and Syracuse was one second behind trying to get to Jalbert. So now we're all even. Jalbert has it. Lost his footing, lost the ball. Scramble for it. Virginia will try to track it down behind the cage, and a good job by the Cavaliers and Connor Gill to come up with the scoop. Loose again. Syracuse ball. Matt Alexander picked it up in a heartbeat. Hustling into the offensive end. He finds Jeff Lowe. 
So the Orange pass up the fast break opportunity, and they will set up in the offensive end. Well, I'm glad they didn't force it. If they didn't feel comfortable with it, then don't force it. And low, a football player gets it off to number 21, Tim Burns. Burns, 6'2", 180. Two Syracuse football players on John Desco's team, Jeff Lowe and Tim Glisker. Lowe is a wide receiver for Paul Pasqualoni. Glisker, a linebacker. Matt Kataya has it. Three and a half minutes to go in the second quarter. Burns trying to make a move on Jalbert. Good pass, good check by Virginia. That was a push. Whistle stops play. A push called against the Cavs. As you said, Dale, Syracuse will keep the ball. No possession, so Syracuse gets the ball back. Ball was on the ground when the push came. Heading down toward the half, a 6-5 orange lead. Shot wide of the cage. Syracuse will keep it. Misfiring to the far side. Chris Cordisco, he tallied earlier. Here come the Orange men. Crescent checking from Virginia and defender Ryan Curtis. He's played well today. He's only 5'10", 180, and that's, uh, he's got tremendously quick hands. Syracuse works it around. Wraparound goal for the Orange men. And Ryan Powell, a 7-5 Syracuse lead. That was pretty. Quick hands, but not quick enough to stop that as he takes him. Watch number six, Curtis. Now he's going to pick up Powell. Powell takes him around, fakes, goes low, and it was just a nice job by Powell because he's playing against one of the best defensemen in the country, and Curtis just could not do anything about it. He took him around the cage and then put in number two for today. Six goals on the season for Ryan Powell, now wearing the fame number 22 here at Syracuse. The Orange men have done a yeoman's job on the face-offs, 9 for 12. Absolutely, that's, that's excellent. You can get that kind of thing. You've got Cersei in there now, number 46, and he's against uh, Jenkins, 44. Ball out, and Stesson's got it. Hughes takes it again. Good job. Chris Cersei on that draw. Cersei and Deniker splitting the face-off assignment for the Orange man. Coyone takes it ahead, down to two and a half to go in the first half, a 7-5 Syracuse lead. Kaufman has it. Josh Kaufman, the freshman from Carthage, a goal and an assist in his collegiate debut against Rutgers, a 20-13 Orange win. <laughs> Solid, he just came in from the substitution area, and he was kind of like jogging. And I think Syracuse yell, coaches yell, get in there. <laughs> nice check, double team, nice double team. Ball down. Kaufman lost it. Virginia trying to scoop it up. Whistle stops play. And I believe it's a push against Syracuse, so Virginia will take it. <laughs> you know, one thing I was watching John Desco on that play after the call, he's a little less animated than he was when he was assistant coach. You know, uh, uh, Roy used to let him do a lot of the yelling, and now he's kind of calmed down, and uh, he's letting his guys do the yelling. Coming up at the half, we'll show you one of the greatest games ever played, Syracuse and Virginia here in the Dome from February of 1997. Our halftime feature coming up at the conclusion of the second quarter of play, so don't go anywhere. One of the greatest games ever played in college lacrosse. A minute 30 left to go in the first half. The Orange men up by a deuce, 7-5. Virginia has it in the offensive end. The Cavs would like to cut into that lead before the break. Virginia works it around. Minute 10 to go in the first half. Aggressive defense from Rule. Now Syracuse comes with a double team. Billy St. George tracking. Mulligan, another beautiful save. Loose ball taken by the Cavs. They'll keep the pressure on. Whistle sounds. A Syracuse player is down in the crease. It looks like St. George. And he, he is, oh, no, it's 47. Check that. That's Jay Andebroth out of Manly SFM High School. He went down and uh, grabbed his knee. Abendroth, let's see. Right. Yeah. 
Virginia yeah. player rolled right into his right leg. Yeah. I have seen that happen before. You got to hope that it's only a little bit of a stretch. He's moving it. Excellent shot of his face as he winces in pain. Yeah. Tim Neal onto the field. Take a look. As John Desco watches from the orange sideline, the upcoming schedule for the Virginia Cavaliers of Dom Starja. And they play a tough schedule as well at Princeton, then home matchups with Rutgers, UMass, and Ohio State, then a road test at Johns Hopkins. So the Cavaliers don't shy away from anybody either, Dale. Nope, they do not. Back on his feet, Abendroth being helped off the field. Looks like that's. Uh... It was just a little bit of a well, scare. <laughs> Instead of a tear, it was a scare, which is good because that's a, that's a tough thing. He got rolled on, and that happens in any sport. And you saw him coming back, play a little defense, and he got rolled up on. But he seems to be all right. Tim Neal and the staff will check him out. Certainly hate to see a player having his foot stick in this spongy, springy right. Carrier Dome turf and have a player roll into his leg. So Abendroth is okay. 49 seconds to go in the first half of action. Virginia has the ball in the offensive end after the stoppage. Controlling on the far side for the Cavaliers, waiting to trigger Drew McKnight. Marshall Abrams watching him. Down to 40 seconds to go in the second quarter. You can watch him moving away from the ball there in front of the, in front of the crease, just cutting and then trying to screen the goalie if they decide to take a shot from far out. Virginia very patient with time ticking down towards zero here in the first half of play. Cavs working around, bad pass thrown by Virginia and Syracuse will take it with 11 seconds to go in the second quarter. It looks like Ackerman is out at least for a while and St. George has been in on def defense along with Abrams and Rule. So Syracuse has got 11 seconds left, but it looks like they made the change and went with the freshman as Ackerman is out. There's St. George, number seven, the freshman out of Baldwin, New York on Long Island. Timeout, Syracuse got the ball in there, got nine seconds. They had to get it in their half. So as John Desco calls a timeout for the Orange Men, we will call a quick timeout ourselves. We'll come back with the nine remaining seconds of the first half right after this. Nine seconds left to go in the first half here in the Carrier Dome. A 7-5 to five Syracuse lead after the timeout. Dale, the Orange with the ball, and they're looking to increase that lead. I'm sure a set play called in the huddle. Yep. They got nine seconds. A lot of time in a lacrosse game lets you get off two shots if you're judicious. If you're Syracuse, That's right. as we know. The Orange with that explosive offensive attack. Kataya lost it from his cross. Ball rolling away. Or maybe and... no shot in the ground ball. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Well, the Orange men gave it a shot. Kataya had it. And the Orange men will take a 7-5 to five lead into the halftime locker room. Great first half for goalie Robbie Mulligan and the Orange Men, a 7-5 advantage. Back with more after this timeout. Welcome back to the Carrier Dome. We are at halftime. The Syracuse Orange Men have a 7-5 lead on the Virginia Cavaliers. And Dale, this game has gone pretty much the way we expected. Very tight, very competitive, and uh, you have the sense the second half will be something special to see. Well, Dom Starges said he figures it'll go down to the last couple of shots, and I think he's right. It's been very exciting. Good defense and good offense. You ready for some first half highlights? Let's check them out. Let's get right to it. A lot to show you from the first half of action here in the Carrier Dome. <laughs> Roadrunner High Speed Halftime is brought to you by Roadrunner High Speed Online. And Dale, on the attack end, both teams lighting the lamp. Oh, absolutely. They've done a real nice job. You're going to watch McKnight, number nine, Abrams on him. Watch him come back and put it right over the head of Mulligan. Nice job by McKnight. And then you're going to see a nice job by number 21, knocking the ball down. Burns gets it up to Powell, and Powell puts it by Kenny. Mulligan has made some great saves in this ball game for the Orange men between the pipes. Thought he might be a little shaky. He made a nice save there, loses the rebound, but stays right in it. 
Virginia gets it, starts it right back out again. They're going to take another hard shot at him. Jalbert takes a crank. Another save by Mulligan. He's had a real nice game. You look at the shots, pretty even. Uh, one of the things that really kind of jumps out at you down there is that the penalties really have kind of, uh, kind of snowballed for Virginia. Six for four minutes and 30 seconds. Syracuse only two. So the penalty situation a little bit to favoring Syracuse. Roadrunner high speed online. Call 1-877-892-6977. We'll come back after a timeout. The Orange Men have a 7-5 lead at the half. When we come back, our halftime feature, a brilliant game in the Dome two years ago between Syracuse and Virginia. All the highlights coming up next. Hi, everybody. I'm Steve Heider, and behind me, the Carrier Dome site of some of the greatest moments in college sports history. Who could ever forget when Nebraska came to town undefeated in number one and the Syracuse football team came away with the win. Or Pearl Washington hitting a half-court shot at the buzzer to seal another Syracuse basketball victory. Jim Beheim has become an icon in college basketball, and no question about it, Paul Pasqualoni is carving out his own niche in the world of college football. The name Dick McPherson still brings a smile to the faces of the Orange faithful. Year after year, the Marvin Harrisons and John Wallace's come and go, and a new crop of would-be sports stars take the field here at Syracuse University. The leaves change, and the cycle begins again. At each spring, as football practice begins and March Madness winds down, another rite of spring commences. Bill is the fastest game of foot. I love the running gun. Keep your eyes on the ball. Yeah, I hope to lead this 1997 uh, Syracuse lacrosse team back to Memorial Day. We don't have a lot of heroes in this game. Dynasty keeps on going. And the dynasty would continue. Syracuse would advance to its 15th consecutive Final Four under head coach Roy Simmons Jr. And although the Orangemen lost in the national semifinal game to the same team they beat back in 1995 for their sixth national championship, the season was nothing short of spectacular. And if it's memories you're looking for, let's take you back to February 28th when Syracuse would open against the number two Virginia Cavaliers. This was the matchup that would become the most watched lacrosse game in history. Copies of the tape were circulated from school to school, fan to fan, through the mail, and even on the internet. The first quarter saw a short run by Syracuse, led by preseason All-American Casey Powell. It turned into a roller coaster of scoring that would continue throughout the game. Jay Jaber, his second goal of the night, rifles that one again high. Three from the Cavs, two from the Cuse, three more from Virginia until the Cavaliers headed for the locker room with a 13 to 10 advantage at the Carrier Dome. Final ticks of the first half, good feed. McKnight drives in, scores! Drew McKnight, Dom Starge's team into the locker room with a three-goal lead. Ten minutes later, Syracuse charged into the third quarter, and Matt Coyote hit only 39 seconds in. But in the next eight minutes, the tough Virginia attack broke down the Orange defense. Senior Michael Watson would lead it off with the first of his two goals on the night, and a half a minute later, the freshman from Lloyd Harbor, New York, Jay Jalbert, hits for one of his four. 10-09 in the third. All of a sudden, Virginia's open up a four-goal lead. Cavaliers would soon find out what the Cuse was made of when junior attack Casey Powell and captain Rob Cavavit combined for three goals apiece 
with one more from Nottingham High School product Ryan Cummings to tie the score at 19 all with less than nine minutes to play. Oh my goodness, what a move by the Carthage Comets! He scores to make it a three goal game! Kevin on a feed from KC Powell! It's a two goal game! Right handed cradle being pushed, quick pass in front. Cavaliers and Hart charging in the offensive zone. Oh, big Good save. play by Gebhardt on Jason Hart. Long outlet pass. Comes right for Powell. With a move to the right hand shot. Powell charging in. Scores! Casey Powell does it again! UVA would respond with a feed from senior Doug Knight to David Curry. And then one for Knight to add to his three. But Powell and the Orangemen would hit for the next two goals of the game. Tying the score at 21. A record crowd of 10,960 would spend the rest of the game on their feet. It could be anybody's game. It could go into overtime or it could be decided in the final moments. Either team needing one more goal. Powell on the left side controls. Thought about a sharp, sharp angle shot on Smith. Powell spins, shoots, go! Casey Powell capped off a personal best with his seventh goal of the night to go along with six assists. And the number two Virginia Cavaliers would leave the Dome with 21 goals and a loss. Highlights from a game on February 28, 1997. Today's game will continue after this. Brought to you by Brian LaCrosse. We welcome you back to the Carrier Dome. We are getting ready for the third quarter of action. The Syracuse Orange men and Virginia Cavaliers. The Orange with a 7-5 lead. Two of the top five teams in the country meeting early in this 1999 season. As a matter of fact, the second game of the season for the Orange men. And this is opening day for Dom Starge's Virginia Cavaliers. Oh, they don't look like it's an opening day. They really are playing very, very well. And uh, I'm sure that he's uh, he's got a in halftime tell them one thing guys the penalties you know be aggressive but let's not make stupid penalties and uh, they had uh, six to two uh, in terms of penalties over Syracuse that's a stat that you really don't want to lead in we are coming to you from the Carrier Dome on the campus of Syracuse University a very warm dome today they have turned the temperature up to about 85 degrees to melt the snow off the Teflon roof Syracuse doing a wonderful job on the face-off scale in the first half. That's, that's terrific. I thought it would be a real problem. And uh, at least at this point, it hasn't been. They lose this one. Virginia hustling toward the goal. Ball pops loose. Great Abrams stick work. It up. Great stick work by Abrams. Syracuse will work it away from its own end. Virginia coming out very aggressively here in the second half of play. Bouncing ball taken by Billy St. George of the Orange. I tried to put it down, lost it. They're really had a little problem there. Big stick trying to get by two guys or three guys with little sticks. Peter Ragosa knocked it away. Virginia in the offensive end. Just underway in the second half, a 7 to 5 Syracuse lead. Jalbert has it on the far side. Tucker Radabaugh controls. Very quiet in the first half. Playing a lot of defense here. Good, Coyone, push, push. Good job by Coyone to shove Virginia attack man away from the goal. Centering pass, shot goes high over the cage. Cavaliers will keep it in the offensive end. A good look for Virginia and Jamison Mullen. Now they, they go back. Coyone, who ended up on uh, number 14, Coyone now is going to go back and play in the midfield. Here he is just going back and forth with Connor Gill. Back to the action, a whistle, yeah. stopping play, and Syracuse takes it. A monster moving pick uh, for Cavaliers. So. The Orange will work the clear after we get a new ball. <laughs> they didn't like, they didn't like the, Mulligan didn't like the ball he got. Might have been a, a, one of the little ball boys <laughs> threw it in and they uh, changed it. So. 
Let's see what Rule can do with it. Maybe it had a big black X on it. Yeah, right. I mean, a practice ball. Tossed it back. Yeah. Coyone open in the middle for a moment. Keep the ball here for a while, but you want to stay away from those long passes if you can. Good ride on. Oh, that was a mistake. That ball was up there for a long time. Flag is down on the play. We'll see what happens, but this looks like a definite Virginia goal. Wow. Yeah, they had the I haven't seen that in a long time. Well, they had the goalie out. Remember I told you about forcing the long pass? This one was like a rainbow warrior. Watch this. Rule throws it. They have all sorts of time to make a move on it. Now they know the goalie's out, and he just launches a little one bouncer, and Mulligan can't get back. They gave, they gave up one of those in the game against Rutgers, and they gave up one here. Not the exact same situation, but you don't want to let a cheap goal go by like that. You're better off throwing the ball down the other end and hoping your attack can get it. Jalbert with the bunny. Syracuse 10 faceoffs to the Cavaliers 4. Virginia controlled the first faceoff of the second half. Jalbert scored 34 goals for Virginia last season. Their leading returning goal scorer. An easy one for the Cavs a moment ago. Makes it 7-6 Orange Man. Two minutes gone by in the second half. And here comes Virginia again. Hard with the ball. Face off, man. Cavaliers will set up the offense. Controlling behind the cage. Tucker around a ball. He's harassed. Ruling on the action as well. Round ball. Rule can't scoop it up. Ball rolls free, and Virginia keeps it. Rule last to touch it. Yep. Rule trying to get out there, get the ball back. You see the little, there's Seglia with the little stick check and the ball down and then Rule eventually knocked it off his foot, out of bounds or off his stick. Rule the biggest orange man, 6'5", 230 pounds. He's a wall on the close defense. Shot and a score. Perfect placement. For David Baruch, the hat trick for him, and we have a brand new ball game. It's 7-7. Circus has not come out the second half and played up to the intensity of the Cavaliers. Just a left-hand shot and a little bit of a sweep. But they didn't get stick on stick, and they gave up the easy goal before, so they are right back in it and tied up as Baruch puts in his third. This will be a 27-minute game. 7-7 tie. Virginia, two for two on faceoffs here in the second half after the Orange men took 10 of 13 before the break. Ball loose on the deck after the draw. Oh, you can't do that. And you can't do that. Whistles and flags. Syracuse player Matt Alexander down on the turf as Dom Storger watches from the Cavs sideline. Number 40 on the uh, push and a half there. That's Kuntz. Alexander very slow to get up. Yeah. Trainer Tim Neal came onto the field. Well, they were playing. Uh, the, the one guy was playing without a stick, which would have just given Syracuse the ball. It was a play on foul, but then they went on and proceeded, <laughs> proceeded to plant Syracuse's Matt Alexander. So I... I don't know what the, so they're not down a man at all. Syracuse will have the ball. And no penalty on the play. Yeah, they, they're, well, they got, they're, they're even. I'm just counting. The Orange men working around. Syracuse with possession in a 7 7 game. Dale, in the past, we've seen a lot more scoring from these two teams. Yeah, and right now, they've gone to a little kind of a zone look. Virginia has. Both defenses have been outstanding. We'll see if things open up here in the second half. Powell hits the deck, tried to keep it as he was down on his backside. Flag is down. And we'll see if we get a call against Virginia. Syracuse is going to be down for 30 seconds as Soliday is called for pushing right there. there you it can is. see the push, yep. 
foul, push in the back. Nine white. Thought that maybe we'd get a call against Virginia when Powell went down, but the call is against Soliday. Right. 30 second push. So another uh, one of the few man up opportunities thus far for the Cavaliers. Scores at 7 7. Syracuse had come out and given up two goals, and now a man up opportunity. Virginia 0 for 2 today. Syracuse has been doing a terrific job of staying away from those man down situations. But the Cavs up a man for 30 seconds. Open man, Jalbert. He beats Robbie Mulligan. 8 7 Virginia lead. Perfectly executed by the Virginia Cavaliers. Not just a right handed version of Soliday and that little extra man, and they whip it around. And when you get the, everybody going the opposite way, you get the ball to a right hander who's open. That's a real tough thing to stop that. And we talked about Jalbert, the All American, what a shot he's got. And you can't get stick to stick, you're down a man. And that's how dangerous it is to give up that penalty. Jalbert heating up two goals here in the second half. And the Cavaliers have scored three unanswered goals to begin the third quarter. And they're really going in earnest for these faceoffs. Segley is up with this, the big stick wingman. Faceoffs will be key from this point on. Absolutely. Syracuse had been down three to one early in the first quarter. Came back from that deficit. The Orange men led seven to five at the break. Now the Cavs have an eight-seven advantage. Well, that, that one cheap goal they gave up right as we started the second half got to be kind of disheartening, but you just got to shake it off. It would been horrible if you missed that one. It was... The Orange working around. Good look at the goal for Syracuse and Tim Burns. The Orange men keep it in the offensive end. Angling in for a look at the goal and firing wide. Chris Cordisco against Syracuse keeps it. You look at Kenny, the, the goalkeeper there for, uh, for the Cavaliers. Gee, he's only a freshman. Last year he was playing high school. He's facing some of the best. He, he's done a good job also. Could you imagine starting your collegiate career, your first college start as a freshman here in the Dome against Syracuse? Tie ball game. Tim Burns, 8-8. Burns hit the hopper up over the shoulder of Kenny. And the freshman would head it his way for the beginning of this second half. Gets the high hopper from Tim Burns. And you see what Burns does with this. Watch where the ball hits. Hops up high just under the 90 degrees there in the cage. So Burns brings Syracuse back to 8-8. Syracuse 12 of 17 in the faceoff circle today. This one will go to Virginia, though. Penalty, yep. Procedure call on Syracuse. So the Cavs have it in 8 8 game. Twenty-five minutes left to go in regulation. Leahy controls on your side for the Cavaliers. Syracuse defender lost his footing. Ball loose on the far side. Cavs chase it. And Virginia will keep him in the offensive end. Connor Gill used that free arm quite a bit. He's going to get a call here one of these times, I think. Very talented freshman for Virginia. Oh, good save. Terrific play by Mulligan. Mullen had a beautiful look at the net. Robbie Mulligan came up with the save. Interference. Quick call against Virginia. So a free clear for Syracuse. Nice save by Mulligan. Watch, this is a hard one. Watch the reaction time. Off stick side, opposite, down. Trap it, no rebound. He's getting much better at that. And then they interfered with him, and Syracuse gets the free clear. Eight big saves from Mulligan, and that was a great play a moment ago. Yeah, it was off his offside. He just did a super job. Pataya, wrap around. 9-8 Orange. I was just going to say, he's been kind of quiet lately, Kataya. You can't let him get loose. Matt Kataya off to a tremendous start to his senior season. Just go around with just a sweep. 
Watch him right there. He's on uh, 17, Davies, and he loses him. He puts the stick down low. Now, if you see you do that once, you might see that again. Second goal today. When I say quiet, well, he got 10 points against Rutgers. <laughs> so anything less than that's quiet, I guess. Nine goals for Matt Pattaya already. Oh, there's a big fight going on for these face-offs, I'll tell you. Syracuse takes it after the battle. Here comes Marshall Abrams. The long stick carrying into the offensive end. Wants to shoot. He does and fires wide. Syracuse keeps it. He is an offensive threat. He is a legitimate offensive threat with that big stick. Sometimes he'll stay down there. If that, if that shot was saved, he'll stay down there and play a little offense. Tough with that six-foot pole, but... Abrams from nearby Nedro. Syracuse works it around. Good look at the goal for the Orange men. Virginia looking to clear, and the Cavaliers throw it away. Syracuse Kenny, uh, will take it. Kenny made up, I don't want to say a freshman mistake. Anybody could make that, but that was a, about a 50-yard pass diagonal, and it was just too high, and Syracuse is going to get the ball back. A lot of offense. In this contest, 23 shots for Virginia, 21 for Syracuse. Both goalkeepers have played very well. Ryan Powell takes a breather on the Syracuse sideline. Very warm in the Carrier Dome today. You're right, legs are going to count here in the fourth quarter, I think. This is early in the season, not to say that you're not in shape, but you know, you're not in shape the way you are for the end of the season. Carrier Dome, usually a very comfortable place to play. Climate controlled, about 70 degrees, but about 85 today as they try to melt the snow off the roof. Syracuse keeps him in the offensive end. Good play by Glisker. Bouncing shot wide. Kaufman missed. Syracuse trying to set up in front. Ball pops loose to Kenny. Good play by the freshman goalie. Syracuse contesting all these clear opportunities. This one goes to Virginia. Cavs into the offensive end. They're used to playing in the heat down in Charlottesville when they play their home games. Oki cleared that for the Cavs. He's going to go back. Jay Albert controls for the Cavs. Midway through the third quarter, 9-8 Orange men. The other football player's in, Glisker is in, and he is on Jalbert. There's a nice matchup size-wise. Glisker's got an inch or two on him and a couple of pounds. Oh, beautiful. Outstanding play by Virginia. Jamison Mullen finishes a 9-9 tie. He just went right down the middle and got the pass. You can't afford to hold on to the ball too long. And he puts it in. Watch it. There's the pass. They slide, but too late. As he got off the pick, he got the pass. Nice little pass on the, on the give and go. That was a real nice pass by Radabaugh. We commented Radabaugh played quietly in the first half, but this is a beautiful play. Yep. Just a dandy pass, and it goes to 9-9. Mullen with his second goal of the contest. Radabaugh drew two defenders and found Jamison Mullen wide open. Syracuse still with the edge in the faceoffs, 13-6. Big draw here, a 9-9 tie. It's a hard and Cersei out there. Ball still down. Virginia takes the loose ball. Oh, a heck of a check there. Good poke check by the Orange men. Brooke alone lost it. Abrams can't reach the pass, so Virginia will take over. And the second is pass, I think, 24. Just out of, here's the check. Watch this check. Right out of the stick. Heck of a play, stick on stick. Knock that one free. Virginia looking to clear, and the Cavaliers throw it away. So Syracuse will gladly take over. I think they want to put a little pressure on Kenny as much as they can. So we're going to close off everybody else. We're going to make the goalie, freshman goalie, handle the ball, and let's see if he can come up and make the long pass. He's been the last two passes. He's overthrown and, and given the ball back to Syracuse. So if that's the strategy, it's working. That's a key aspect of the game, along with trying to protect the net. You have to be very sharp on the clears, and Syracuse has tried to exploit Kenny's inexperience. Well, right the now, Orange men need to clear. Yeah, they're doing the same thing, right? They got Mulligan in, and now they're going to 
pop it over here. That's a good good play. As Tim they got Burns the ball to Burns. Yeah. Tyone controls. Burns shoots back and Kaufman comes up front. Well, on that clear there, they use an extra midfielder, and then uh, when after they cleared the ball, they brought in the defenseman again, uh, uh, St. George. So it was a good play. Ball down, shot. Coyone tried to work himself free. Didn't get a bad look. Shot wide of the cage. Syracuse backing it up, so the Orange men keep it. Powell back into the contest, replacing Liam Banks. Here's Liam, freshman attack man from Setauket. Picked up an assist in the Rutgers game. Powell harassed, shakes free of his man, Ryan Curtis, out of Kataya. Kayoni sends it out high. Solidet. Breaks in front. Lost the ball momentarily. Battle for it. Oh, men come away. Super job there of Darkangelo coming up with that. Terrific play. That Pretty. resets the Syracuse offense. That'll just go down as a mundane ground ball, but that was anything but. You're right. That was big. Solid ace free. 10-9 Orange Man. You can't leave Brian Soliday alone. He gets open. And they give him that distance, and he turns and fires a left-handed shot. There's the move. There's Salde breaking away. He loses number seven, and Radabaugh comes over to try to help, but it's too late, and he comes up with his second. Great job of finishing by Brian Salde. He was left alone, scores his fifth goal of the season. Another key face-off here in the second half. Cavaliers look to take it. Oh, my gracious. The Orange man. Knocking the Cavaliers all over the Carrier Dome. Ball loose. Cavs take it. Good job on the air side. Oh, he's Drew McKnight. Fast break. He's unsettled here. All right. St. George ran him back. That was close. Billy St. George is a very talented player. Chalbert sends it behind the goal now. McKnight has it. Centering pass out high. Shot. Mulligan makes a beautiful save. Syracuse to try to work the clear. What they've done now is they've taken Syracuse's fast break game away here after Syracuse has gotten the ball on a save. Burns gets it, so they have a little bit of a break. Here come the Orange men. The extra pass made. Kataya lost it for a second. Trying to scoop it back up. It's taken by Virginia. We have a whistle, though. The loose ball taken by the Cavaliers. Syracuse offside. John Harvey. Call against the Orange. Yeah, one of the things that on that... Uh, ride and they put so much pressure on Syracuse that you can't just stop the ball and pop it back up and it took a while for him to get that ball. I mean, he didn't, he got the stick down on it and it was still rolling so he didn't have a chance just to pop it back out so it hasn't been a fast break. Now, see, they put the pressure on the goalie again. Can he regain control? He is well away from the net. The Orange men keep the pressure on and it's taken by Virginia. Finally, by David Baruch. Syracuse hustles back defensively. The Cavaliers set up the offense. Less than four minutes to go in the third. A 10-9 Orange lead. They've lost Jalbert momentarily. Now, now they pick him up. Kolaski 45 in for Syracuse. Can't leave Jalbert alone. Very dangerous player. Good passing by the Cavaliers. It sets up the tally. The fourth goal for David Baruch. And we are tied again 10-10. Not the guy we, we would have put, picked maybe to have four goals at this point. But he has just played super. That's a quick stick. He got loose, and he just takes a real fast shot, a real pretty shot. So he gets a nice assist from behind. And he makes the net dance four times. Great start to the season for David Baruch. This is the season opener for Virginia. Four goals for him. He scored six all of last season. Syracuse 13 of 21 on the draws. Ball loose. Long stick for Virginia. Lost the handle momentarily. Now Syracuse has it in the offensive end. 
Hustling in for a bouncing shot. Kenny knocked the shot away. Good job by the freshman. He comes up with another save. He initially stoned Joe Seglia. Here come the Cavs. Two key saves by the freshman, Kenny. Good job. Is that hard? All the way down the sideline. They finally get to him, but he kept the ball in bounds all the way. Good play by Hard. Now Virginia will set up in the offensive end. 2.50 to go in the third, a 10-10 tie. Out of off, trying to get away from Rule. Holcomb has it, and he'll drop it back for Baruch. Oh, that's awful. I didn't, I didn't, no, it did not. I thought maybe Syracuse stick got on that. It was just an errant pass, and it looked like uh, Marshall Abrams might have gotten his feet on it, but no, Syracuse were clear. And once again, let's check how they pick up this ride of Virginia's. Syracuse clearing out of its own end. 10-10 deadlock with 2.20 to go in the third quarter. We expect another fantastic finish for this Syracuse-Virginia matchup, the 11th meeting in the all-time series, which is tied at five wins apiece. That was close. Syracuse had a little problem there. The core disco is on the turf for the Orange Men. Angling in for a shot, Good another save. big save by Kenny. He's come up big. Last couple of trips up the field for the Orange Men. Nice job by Kenny coming out, but he didn't get there in time. There's the shot, down low, rebound, and Kutaya beat him to the end line. Tim Burns with the shot on goal. Syracuse triggers from behind the cage. Kataya with it. Back for Ryan Powell. Burns back out high for Chris Cordisco. He holds even with the cage on the far side. Syracuse very patient this trip. Good defense by Virginia, really forcing Syracuse out far, not letting them penetrate. This looks like a man-up situation for the Orange men. They're so patient, but both teams need even strength. Oh, that was outstanding. Chris Cordisco creates some spacing and lights the lamp, an 11-10 Orange lead. Well, he frustrated David Baruch. Baruch was playing defense on him, and he took him, and I didn't think he had enough room for the shot. See, there's 24, there's Baruch staying with him. Hack, hack, shot. Yeah, he took the shot when he didn't expect it. Right there. His and brother he, Jeff was in here too, gumming up the works, number 14. Right, right between the legs of Kenny. Another faceoff, number 44, that's his Jenkins. Virginia quickly into the offensive end. Final minute of the third quarter. One goal, Syracuse lead. Jeff Lowe onto the turf, along with Virginia's number one, Michael Leahy. They match up out high. 30 seconds remaining in the quarter. Cavs working around. Down one. There, guarded by Brian Horlowski. And Jalbert has it, moving toward the cage. Ten seconds to go in the quarter. Terrific play by the Cavaliers. Leahy firing the shot past Robbie Mulligan. We are tied 11-11. Syracuse defense talks it over after that goal. And then they break. Just a, too much room there. Too much room for number one. Nine seconds left. First goal of the season for Leahy. Leahy, a local product from Camillus. Senior Mitty played his high school lacrosse for the great Mike Messier at West Genesee. Virginia doing a great job on the faceoffs here in the third quarter. It's now 13-10, Orange Men. Bouncing shot, broken up in front. That ends the third quarter of play. So this will be a 15-minute game.
as we head to the fourth quarter all even Syracuse and Virginia tied up yet another great meeting in this series between these two college lacrosse powers 11 11 in the dome back with fourth quarter action after this on Super Sports. Syracuse and Virginia getting ready for the fourth quarter, an 11-11 tie. Orange head coach John Desco knows the Syracuse defense must keep an eye on Virginia's number 10, Jay Jalbert. We will see Jay in the midfield a little bit more this year just because I think their strength on attack, they have some good players in, in McKnight and Connor Gill and uh, Leachman is a good player, solid attackman, also good coming in the midfield. So I think right now they're looking to boost their midfield up and, and can do that with Jay Bear. And Dale, as we saw at the end of that third quarter, Bear with the perfect feed to Michael Leahy, who finished it off with the goal. Gave Leahy his first goal of the season on a real pretty assist, and it's right, as you said, back to a 15-minute game, 11-11, as the fourth quarter starts. Face off hard out there, and Searcy. 13-10. The face-offs in favor of the Orange Man. Syracuse had a chance to scoop it up. Dan Stessen could not. Rule does. Sends it back to the cage and Rob Mulligan. Fourth quarter just underway in the Dome. 11-11. Syracuse and Virginia all even. Well, you really don't want your goalie handling the ball, and you don't want to have your defenseman making those big poles, making those long, long passes, because eventually something bad happens. Syracuse having a very hard time clearing. Now Rule feels he'll have to take it himself, and he does over midfield. It's a big target. 6'5", 230 with a six-foot pole on one of his arms. He is huge. Powell has it behind the net. Works behind the screen, trying to get loose. Drops it off out high. Now Coyone quickly met by the Virginia defense. Harassed, and he lost the ball. Pops high. Solid tried to scoop it. Couldn't do it. Loose on the deck. And now Virginia takes it. Jalbert with the ball. Tyone all over him. Matt with a poke check. Soliday grabs the ball. A chance for Syracuse, an unsettled situation. Soliday bounce shot. Hit the crossbar, deflects away. May have been kicked. Syracuse will keep it. I'm just going to say, Paul was a little upset because he felt he was open on the crease. But it was a great play. Watch Coyone here. Just a one-handed check, and he takes it away from Jalbert Soliday right on the spot. The shot not on the cage, but Syracuse certainly gets the ball back, but Powell was, felt he was open, I believe, on the crease. And that time, Syracuse elected to take the fast break opportunity instead of patiently setting up the offense. So the Orange will reset from behind the cage. Ryan Powell to do the honors. No, Solid eight outside. just missed. Good screen set for him by Devin D'Arcangelo in front. Got a 1-4-1, one, four, one. four guys on the crease, and one guy on top, one guy behind. It was, as you said, a nice setup play. Syracuse triggering from behind the net. Matt Kataya with it. Ryan Powell takes it now. High for Coyone, back out for Solid eight. On the doorstep, the Orange men take the lead. Devin D'Arcangelo makes it 12-11 Syracuse. One of the interesting things on that play is watch 32, Kaufman. Watch 32. You'll see it. I hope we see it at the end because this is Soliday. There's the ball up in the air. There's the shot. But what happened was 32, Kaufman has three guys on him, picking him up at the end. Right, one, two, three. And what happens is you've got three guys on one. He got open, and he put it in. So, Saudi makes the pass, bounces that way, and not able to get over in time to stop it was Davies. But uh, that was a nice play. I don't think Josh Kaufman meant to set up his teammate Devin D'Arcangelo so beautifully, but right. what a perfect feed. Virginia takes the faceoff. Cavaliers with a chance. Oh, Mulligan makes another gorgeous save. Rebound comes to Virginia. Baruch chased away from the goal. Cavs will reset. Holcomb onto the field, number 27 for Virginia. The 
Cavs working around. Bobby Mulligan has had a terrific game. That was a body save. That's a bruise somewhere. Syracuse defense trying to push the Virginia attack man away from the goal. Breaking free for a look. Holcomb, he fired wide. Virginia will keep it in the offensive end. Ackerman back in 26 playing defense. He was out for a while. He's back. Giving a break to St. George. Let's watch that last save again, oh. Dale. It looked like a midsection, oh, midsection save, didn't it? That'll bring your voice up an octave or two. Yeah. Cavs working around. Bad pass. Rolling to midfield. It's anybody's ball now. No. Baruch yeah. grabs it on the far side. Syracuse's defense hustling back. Virginia will slow it down and set up the offense. Mark Murphy has it on the near side. Watched by Josh Rule. Rule has played very well today. Jamie Leachman has it on the far side. Oh, he intercepted that one. Look what I found. Rob Mulligan intercepts the centering pass. And now Syracuse goes on the clear. Mulligan has had a great game. Yes, he has. Burns tripped. Lost the ball. Scoops it back up. Great job by Tim Burns to stick with it. Here he comes in the offensive end. They want coaches saying settle it down. Powell controls. Chased by Ryan Curtis. Ryan using his speed. A wrap around. Kenny with the save. That was a big play by the Virginia keeper. Virginia on the clear now. Down to 11 minutes to go, fourth quarter, a one-goal Syracuse lead, 12-11. The Cavs set up in the offensive end. <laughs> Both teams trying to run subs, and they're trying to match speed for speed, so nobody gets a break. And despite it, they do get a break coming out, and they fall in, get in the, in the hole there. Jalbert has the ball. Virginia setting up in the offensive end. High pass. Mullen having a tough time tracking it down. Instead, Leahy grabs it. Leahy, the senior from West Genesee. Very low scoring affair between Syracuse and Virginia. Usually a lot more offense than what we've seen today. It's 12 11 Orange men with 10 10 to go in the fourth quarter. Virginia patiently works the ball around. Well, this is what Dom was talking about. You don't want to waste your chances, so make sure where everybody is. Set up the offense and run it. Moving out in front of the goal, Radabaugh knocked away by Mulligan. Oh, Mulligan. He's chasing it. Will Syracuse take it? That good play by Mulligan. Great play. He just screened off Syracuse the Virginia ball. player. That was a shot. He scares me when he comes out that, that far, but watch what he does. Bang, knocks the ball off a stick. No, no hesitation whatsoever, but now he knows I'm not going to pick the ball up, but I'm going to screen off who's ever there until it goes out over the line, and I'm closest to it. We get the ball. Nice job by number 13. He's had an outstanding game. Pretty, pretty play. Just a sophomore. He's played like a senior today. Syracuse ball on the offensive end. Coyone. Gets it off, fouled high for Tim Burns. Less than 10 minutes to go in the fourth. 12-11 Orange men. Coyone trying to make a move on his man. Centering pass, quick shot. Oh, Kenny that's in. could not come up with it. It rolled past him. Now we'll see what the call is. They may call a crease against the Orange man. He's going to call it. No, I think he called the illegal touch Syracuse ball. The ball got by Kenny. He thought he stopped it from crossing the goal well, line. We'll see. Let's see right here. Ball down. He grabs it with his hand. No, nope, never crossed. So it's just an illegal touch. Smart play. Smart play. Saved the goal. Absolutely. The Orange men celebrated as if they had scored. Well, you know, it looked like it had gone in, but, uh, and of course, you don't expect to see that he put his hand down there, but that was smart. Saved a goal for Virginia. The Orange men trying to get it back. High shot over the cage. Syracuse will keep it. Matt Katire firing high. Less than nine to go in the fourth quarter. 
12-11 Orange men. Powell playing catch behind the cage. Tim Burns looking to center to a teammate. Brendan Muller is playing defense. He just got beat there. Ball Burns down. lost his man. Ball came loose to Virginia. We have a whistle, though. Push against Virginia. Syracuse ball. I believe it was, uh, did you say 27, Holcomb? I'm not sure which number it was, but there were, there, there's the push. At any rate, Syracuse gets the ball back. Now you got to take advantage of this. Hayoni sends to Burns. He has a look. Score! Tim Burns makes it 13-11 Orange men with 8.22 to go in the fourth quarter. You could see that setup. You could see that setup. Burns was just waiting for it. Look at the double team. We got two guys. Somebody's alone. Step, 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 shoot. Absolutely. You're going to get a look at it again. Coyone tosses it back. Look at how much time he's got to crank. And he put it in stick side. Just a beautiful shot by Burns. He looks very, very good. Six foot, 178 pounds. Six two, 178. Can he guess that Burns would go to his left? Burns went to his right. A clutch insurance goal for the Orange Man. Hart comes up with a key face off there. Flag coming down. We may get a slash. Now it'll be a hold. Holding is the call. Clutch right here. Boom. Free hand on him. If they see the free hand at all, they're going to give you the. We're going to give you the hold. Good observation. It goes against the Orange Man. So it'll be 30-second penalty. Syracuse man down, and uh, check on the, uh, as Alexander's down, we'll check on the man-up opportunities for the Cavaliers. Virginia up a man for 30 seconds. 0 for 3, the Cavaliers haven't come up with a goal on a man-up today. Another brilliant save by Rob Mulligan. The flex out of bounds, so Virginia will keep it. Watch this one. Watch this one. Let's see where it goes. Man, look at that. Off his face mask. That's in the right place at the right time. Centering pass. Quick shot. Why? Virginia keeps it. You know, win or lose, Mulligan has kind of come of age in this game. I think he's just doing a, a super job. If you play this way against Virginia, you've got a bright career ahead. 12 saves for Mulligan today. Cavaliers trying to center. Pass goes That's a pass. astray. He gets it. Oh, Syracuse ball. Procedure. I didn't see where the call was backfield, but it will give the ball to Syracuse. The ball was in bounds. Six to go, fourth quarter. Syracuse has the ball, a 13-11 lead. The Orange work the clear now. Now you want to get to a guy with a short stick as soon as possible. Soliday's getting in a little bit of trouble here. They're doubling the ball. They knock it away from him. Excellent play by Virginia. The Cavaliers are down two goals. They need the ball. Jalbert brings it ahead. Met by Soliday. Pass to the near side across the defense. Mullen controls it. See him moving without the ball there. You see Leahy moving a low on him. Everybody trying to get some separation, trying to get some distance. Long, loping, looping pass, I should say. Soliday playing a little defense. Good check. Loose ball comes to Jeff Lowe, but Soliday made the play. Big trip for the Orange men. Looking to add to their two-goal lead. Jeff Lowe tells him to settle it down. He's going to go off. What he's saying is, we got to get some people on. We want to get our big stick mini off, and off goes St. George. Let's get Coyone and company on. Here comes Coyone onto the field. Kaufman's on. Tim Glisker's on. There they go. They want to get it back out there, get it to Coyone. Kaufman with it now. Down to six minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. Syracuse up by two. Kaufman sends behind the goal. Kataya with it now. Trying to work behind a Powell screen. Here he comes. 
Looking for the wrap oh. Has an opportunity. Oh. Just missed wide. What a dandy. He looked like, okay, I don't have the shot. And then he took it. And it was uh, very close to going in. Of course, very close doesn't count, but it was a dandy little low shot. Watch here. Okay, all right, I've gone too far. I don't have a shot. I'll just stop, and when you go beyond me, I'll crank it low. Just missed the pipe. That could have been a backbreaker for Virginia. Syracuse with it. Kaufman sends high for Glisker. Tim fires high. The Orange will keep it. 5.26 to go in the fourth. 13-11 Orange men. Not a bad shot when you got back up there. Tim Blisker has a hard shot, too. He's a big boy. Yes, he is. Plays linebacker for the Orange football team. Syracuse sets up in the offensive end. Kataya back for Powell, operating from behind the cage, looking for a cutter in front. Yeah, they're not going to go back, though. They're going to put an extra guy in the goal and not go back and play him, and then that lets them kind of double up when somebody comes around like a little cat and mouse game. Powell holding. Kayoni trying to break free on the near side. Virginia doing an outstanding job defensively. Kataya took the shot, could not beat Kenny. Battle for possession along that end line. Syracuse will get it again. Good hustle by Kataya and number 22, Ryan Powell. And they're going to call. Whose timeout is it? Okay, Virginia's timeout. Cavaliers want to set up the defense. The Orange men trying to protect the two goal lead, perhaps add to that lead with 451 left to go in the fourth quarter. One of the things you want to do is you want to get the ball back, get that goal, then get back off to the faceoff circle because it's one of the few sports where if you score and you've got a good faceoff, man, you can just keep the ball all day. What's happened is they're down by two, 451 left, and Syracuse was taking a lot of time off the clock. Let's see if they go after the ball. As Dom Starja brought his Cavaliers into the dome today to face the Orange men, he knows that you can't get into a high-scoring game with the Orange men. There's so many explosive offensive players on the field that a lot of goals can happen in a short amount of time. And so a two goal lead with two minutes to play is certainly not as safe in this game as it is in some others. Good point. The last goal scored by the Orange Mendale. Just a rocket shot and they gave him too much room as he was able to, Burns able to take two steps and get that stick crank with the wrists and that's a real tough shot. Take a look at the shots here. 9, 7, 11, 5, 9, 7, 9, 8. Syracuse and Virginia, you don't get much closer than that. And, you know, Dom Starge was right. He said, you got a two-goal lead with two and a half minutes left to go in the game. That isn't much of a lead. <laughs> this one is far from over. 4.51 left to go in the fourth quarter. A Syracuse two-goal lead, and we'll break it down. 4-4 tie at the end of one. Syracuse led at the break by a couple. Then Virginia came back to tie it after three. And the Orange men have broken the 11-11 tie with two goals here in the fourth. And have shut them out here in the fourth. Uh, so for a lot of time left, but certainly have played very, very well defensively in the fourth. And both goalkeepers have played exceptionally well. Robbie Mulligan has had an outstanding game for the Orange. And Derek Kenny in his first collegiate start as a true freshman has played well for Virginia. 4.40 left to go in the fourth quarter. Syracuse looking for an insurance goal. Soliday fires wide. Katai is there, so Syracuse will keep it. Did you notice that? It was right-handed that time. Soliday's got a hard shot left-handed, and he sets up and cranks right-handed. He has a very bright future at Syracuse. Powell trying to lose his man in front and go over the shoulder. Or he's trying to wait till they, they, oh good, he's got a shot here, he's got a free shot. Flag down, pass in front, is deflected, and the whistle sounds as Virginia grabs the ball. 30 second call. Yeah. So Syracuse will be man up on the technical, and what he's doing, watch him, he just gets pushed and held and whatever on a 30 second. You could have called a number of things, Walt Munzer just made a call, and at any rate, uh, Syracuse will be man up, and this is one you want to take an opportunity, take your time, you got 30 seconds, but make sure you don't waste this man up opportunity. So Curtis. 30 second holding call against Curtis. Yeah, he's played well, and uh, he is just, uh, it's hot in here, it's tiring, and we'll see what these guys got left in the last 418. Syracuse man up. Neither team has been able to capitalize much at all on the man up situations. Virtually all the scoring has come even strength. We'll see what the Orange do on this 30-second power play. 
Coyone's open. Syracuse with a big three-goal lead now. Coyone tallies to make it 14-11. Orange, 4-0-8 to go in the fourth. You know, last year, I didn't think he took real hard shots sometimes. I thought maybe he could have put a little more zip on him. Boy, he couldn't have put much more zip on that bear. That was nice. Took it high, and the reaction time wasn't even there. Kenny didn't have a chance on that. But that's how hard the shot was. Nice look, nice pass. And the assist goes to Powell. And that three-goal lead certainly isn't, uh, isn't over, but it, it gives you a little bit of breathing room. Face-off's very important now. Ball loose, rolls out of bounds to the near side, and Virginia will take it. Now, this is one year in the last four minutes. If you're looking for a call from the official, a cheap call, you're not going to get it. You know, uh, you're going to have to really smack somebody or really push somebody. They don't want to let a game be decided on a, on a call. And that doesn't seem they're going to ignore anything, but uh, they're going to let you play hard. That's how it ought to be. Let the players play. We'll see what Syracuse's defense can do. The Orange men trying oh. to protect a three-goal lead. A little bit of a problem there. Virginia trying to get one back. Mulligan with another terrific save. Radabaugh with the shot. Mulligan with the save. Syracuse in transition. The Orange men patient. Sorry, Ted. They had nowhere to go. They had them all covered. And uh, they were trying to get people in and get people out. And it was very, very uh, scary there for Syracuse. Good defense by, by Virginia. Powell has it. Chased by Curtis. The team's at even strength. 3.20 to play, fourth quarter. Powell thought he was slashed, received a poke in the face mask, no call. Yeah, I told you. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Your helmet's still on. Gotta let him play. <laughs> Curtis all over Powell. Yeah, Ryan gets it away for Burns. They're gonna come. Oh, although this time he didn't miss it. Little frustration there on Mr. Curtis. You have to wonder what the heck was Ryan Curtis thinking. Let's take a look at this again as Powell is not flat. And you know, it wasn't like it wasn't like there wasn't anybody there to see it either. The referee was right in back of him. Unbelievable. And John Desco went nuts on the Syracuse sideline trying to protect his player, Ryan Powell. So number six, who has played so well, Ryan Curtis, makes a not so smart play. Just after I got done talking about the officials, how you'd really have to hit him. And he really labeled them right in front of the official. That's exactly what he did. A minute call against Ryan Curtis, and the penalty against Virginia could not have come at a worse time with 2.58 to go in the fourth quarter, and Syracuse up three. This game is far from over. And you know, if Syracuse scores, Ted, it's not a releasable penalty. He, he sits for the full minute. Now the Orangemen will try to put this one out of reach. Syracuse man up for 60 seconds. Less than three minutes to play in regulation, a three-goal orange lead. John Desco just went over and, and gave him a little pat on the head in the penalty area to, to number six, Curtis. Good sportsmanship. Syracuse works the ball around the perimeter. Looking for a good look at the goal. One more tally by the orange would make life very difficult for Virginia. Syracuse, two of six, man up today. It gives you a lot of good opportunity to take some time off the clock, too. Big crowd here in the dome, starting to get into the ball game. Coyone feeds high for Kaufman. Cuse trying to work it around. Ball goes behind the cage. Powell leap to corral the pass. Ryan trying to get loose in front. Oh. Sends high over the cage. <laughs> Darkangelo really snagged that one. That was great play. Salome on the doorstep. No good. Could not get a look. Great play by Virginia's defense. David Jenkins has it. Under two minutes to go, fourth quarter. The Cavs have to hurry. Baruch with four goals today. Angling in. Shoots and scores. Virginia needed that. 1.50 to go in the fourth quarter. The Cavs have cut it to two at 14 to 12. Now, the stat that we said that it was becoming important, the faceoff, now it's down to this faceoff and maybe one more as to who, who's going to win or who's going to lose. Watch the goal attempt right off the pipe. And then other way comes down. A man who's been very active today, Baruch. 
right down right side. On oh, Hart comes up with an important face off. Fifth goal for Baruch. This is a key draw. Whistle as the ball popped free. Procedure. Syracuse ball. Playing with one hand on the stick, I believe. They're looking where the ball is. They don't want to free clear for Syracuse. They want to force him to make that, that pass. So we'll see where the ball was. Right about the 45-yard uh, line, I thought. And that's where they place it. Here comes Josh Rule. Yeah, I'd get rid of that, Josh. Virginia looking to force a turnover. A timeout? That looks like a timeout call. That's what I would have done. Syracuse timeout. Syracuse takes the timeout. Head coach John Desco trying to lead his team to a victory over Virginia and a crowd of more than 5,200 in the dome starting to get fired up. Well, if you see Josh Rule between the sideline and two guys, he's got that six foot pole. You want to get a good timeout. 131 left. You got a two goal lead. You don't want to make the mistake. It was a nice clear. Rule came over, but he's not the guy you want hemmed in. Virginia head coach Dom Starja talking with his Cavaliers. A minute 31 left to go in regulation. Every second is precious in this rivalry. Every minute of the 60 is, is going to be important. This game is not going to be over until the final whistle sounds. Uh, you know, some of the things that have happened at the end of these games in the last couple of years, again, going back to 94, where we're down five in the fourth quarter, we're down two men, and we come back to tie the game and send it into overtime. Dale, this goal by David Baruch a moment ago was so important. Absolutely. It brought him within two, and as you heard Dom Starcia say, every second is important. You know, he, he can do those horoscopes. He can get one of those 1 900 numbers. He told us exactly <laughs> what was going to happen in this game, and uh, he's absolutely right. And it's still a lot of game left, a minute and a half, two goal lead. But the only thing is that Syracuse got is Syracuse has possession. We were tied at 11 after three here in the fourth. Syracuse has outscored Virginia three to one. However, they're going to have to keep the ball in the box when they get it in there. And if they step out, they lose possession. Let's see what happens. As we've been saying, this one hasn't been decided yet. Less than 90 seconds to go. A two-goal Syracuse lead. Coyone making a look. He's pushed away. Spins away from the pressure. Here he comes. Coyone oh. shoveled it, and it hit. One of the posts. Loose ball to Virginia. Unsettled situation favoring the Cavaliers. Extra pass is made. Virginia on the doorstep. Mulligan knocked it away. Whoa. What a sequence. Coyone just did not take a hard shot. It was kind of an underhanded shot. Open, tough. Oh, my. Mulligan makes the save of the day. Loose ball to Virginia. Radabaugh falls. Shot goes wide. Syracuse. Oh. Virginia backs it up. Cavs keep it with 52 seconds to go in regulation. Mulligan couldn't have been much closer to that one on the end line. What a game for Rob Mulligan. Look at the race for this great save, first of all. Rebounds out. Down again. Ball is down. Another shot or another pass. And then on the shot, Mulligan raced to the end line. Couldn't quite get there. 52 seconds. 14-12, what a game. Virginia head coach Don Starja takes a timeout. We'll break away as well. We'll have the conclusion after this. Welcome back to the Carrier Dome. 52 seconds to play in the fourth quarter. Syracuse has a two-goal lead. Key possession for Virginia. The Cavs trying to run a play after a timeout taken by head coach Don Starja. Underhanded shot. Mulligan makes another big save. Drew McKnight took the shot. Syracuse in transition. 30 seconds to play in regulation. And we have a whistle stopping play. The goal won't count. No. That was a great little segment there by Seglia. That was a Seglia segment. He's a he little just mad. Found out he didn't hear the whistle. The, the goal won't count. I know it. Ah, shucks, he says. <laughs> the little guy, number 24, <laughs> Joe Seckley, 5'8", 178 from Yorktown. Just a great job. Watch him. He's going to get the ball, and he just motors. He doesn't hear the whistle. Neither does anybody else. 
and he says, there, that ought to end it. The goalie did because he didn't move. So Seglia denied timeout down on the turf with 28 seconds to go in the fourth quarter. The Orangemen up by two, 14 to 12. We have a lot more Syracuse lacrosse to show you here on Super Sports this season. You will see the Orangemen play Cornell on April 14th, then on the 25th, the Orange Men take on Pennsylvania. Then the 26th, Syracuse matches up with Princeton. So some great games ahead for Syracuse lacrosse fans right here on Super Sports. Don't leave yet. You know, I know 28 seconds, but if you step out of the box, you make a mistake, they come down and get a goal, and then it's a face-off, you really could be in overtime. Timeout taken. And now the two teams head back on the turf. Great lacrosse game. Another tremendous contest in this rivalry. Rob Mulligan getting the crowd fired up. 15 saves today, and he has had a whale of a game. More than 5,200 strong here in the Dome. They want to see their Orangemen move to 2-0 against the very tough Virginia Cavaliers, a top five opponent. Whistle sounds, and the clock begins. Kutai's got to stay in the box. He goes back, they make the pass. This is like a four corners in basketball, but you don't want to turn it over, whatever you do. Powell has it. Virginia trying to double team him. Ball pops loose to the Cavaliers. Five seconds remaining in regulation. Virginia won't have enough time. Ahead. Radabaugh won't take the shot, just tosses it to Robbie Mulligan. The <laughs> Orange men hang on. 14 to 12. What a great game here in the Dome, and a great game played by Syracuse's keeper, lucky number 13, Robbie Mulligan. Very classy move there at the end. He could have just finished off with the shot, but he just kind of tossed it in there, and that was a great way to end a great lacrosse game. Both teams spectacular. This has been a great lacrosse game, fun to do. One of the best, Syracuse and Virginia matching up again. The series now in the Orange's favor, 6-5, to five, and you never know, Syracuse and Virginia may meet again in the postseason. We'll come back after a timeout and wrap it up here in the Carrier Dome. The Orange by a deuce, 14-12. Welcome back to the Carrier Dome. What a great ball game today. The Orange Men hold on for a 14-12 win over the Virginia Cavaliers, a top five matchup, along with Dale Drypolcher, Ted DeLuca. We're joined now on the field by Syracuse first-year head coach, John Desco. John, a lot of seasons as Slugger's top assistant. You are now the head man, a 2-0 start to your career. Congratulations, you have done a phenomenal job to get these guys ready. Well, thank you very much. It uh, wasn't real pretty today, but we're happy with the outcome. Uh, the temperature in the dome here is really something that's going to help us get ready for Florida next week. We leave Wednesday, and I think that's what they were getting us ready for. John, comment, if you will, about the, the play of uh, your goalie, Mulligan. I just thought the last week he, he played all right, but I thought he just did a superb job today. Well, I, I think he did. He kind of started out like he did last week. He was a little bit out of position, uh, a little bit jumpy early in the game, but when we needed him down the stretch, he made some big saves. Virginia had some opportunities. Uh, we didn't take... We didn't shoot real smart at the end of the game, and we wanted to pull it out, took a couple shots that we shouldn't have, and gave them some opportunities. And thank, uh, thank goodness Robbie came up with the ball. Basically just a Virginia-Syracuse game, right, John? <laughs> I, you're right. Minus, minus about 10 goals apiece. But it, <laughs> just another dull day here in the Dome. Right. Well, we didn't want anybody to leave early again today. so <laughs> Good job. Uh, we, they're still here, a matter of fact. <laughs> Coach, congratulations. We'll let you go and uh, celebrate with your team. Continued success uh, this season. Looks like uh, it'll be a lot of fun here in 1999. Well, thank you very much, and it was, uh, it was good to get out of here with a W today. John Desco, head coach of the Syracuse Orange Men, and we have seen another brilliant Syracuse-Virginia matchup, and as Coach said, right down to the wire once again. Dom Starge has said it. He thought that's the way it would be, and he's right. A great game. Great, great series. So once again, the final score here in the Dome, Syracuse 14, Virginia 12. Hope you enjoyed every moment of this one. The next time, you will see the Syracuse Orange Men in action. It'll be a matchup with the Cornell Big Red, and you will see that game here on Super Sports Wednesday, April 14th at 8 p.m. For Dale Drypolcher, our producer and director, Mark Ballard, and our entire Time Warner crew, I'm Ted DeLuca. We thank you for watching us this evening here on Time Warner 13.